Hello there guys and welcome to this X-Plane 11 video. Today we're going to be doing something a little different, at least for me it is something I haven't done on the channel before, which is taking a look at a helicopter. Today we're going to be taking a look at a uh, beautiful creation by Dreamfall Creations. It is the Bell 407. In this video we are going to be examining the features that Dreamfall Creations has put into this aircraft. We're going to be examining the exterior and interior modeling and we're going to be taking this chopper for a short flight around Orlando International Airport. Now, the caveat here is that I am not proficient at all in flying helicopters, but I'm going to attempt to lift this aircraft off the ground. Let us begin by taking a look at the exterior modeling of this aircraft. And as you can see, Dreamfoil Creations has taken full advantage of X-Plane 11's latest PBR technology which allows for reflective surfaces. As you can see, the aircraft fuselage has that reflective look that gives it a uh, realistic appearance. And uh, the glass, the reflection of the glass, the blades on top, um, overall the exterior modeling looks extremely convincing and very well polished. As you can see, we experience absolutely no degradation in texture quality as we zoom in on this aircraft. A job very well done in the external texturing department by Dreamfall Creations. Another department where I think this aircraft gets a perfect 10 is the details department. If you look at those blades and how they've been modeled, if you look at the bolts here uh, on the aircraft fuselage, just look at that. Look at how this has been modeled and it does look like metal. It looks like, you know, the material representation is, is done quite well on this aircraft. Um, everything else, the shades uh, of the blades, uh, the tie downs, the curvature. If you look here, if, uh, if you look here at the blade, it's how it's uh, curved towards the ground because obviously the tie down is, is, is still tied. And so there is a little bit of curvature there. And if I click it, you see how that kind of bounced uh, a bit? It relaxed the, the blade. So the amount of, of uh, details really is something I, I appreciate and I give it a full mark on both exterior modeling as well as the detailed texture work. In order to increase interactivity with the aircraft, Greenfall Creations has integrated some really cool features. One of which is really the tie downs. So you can actually remove these tie downs as we've demonstrated um, earlier, right here. You can also connect the GPU by clicking here. There you go. You can also access the external menu by clicking here and this will give you um, a list of features that you can add to the aircraft. You can add low skids, uh, you can uh, remove the uh, the damper up here by clicking here. Uh, glass doors, uh, door with virtual window, I guess that's what it means. Uh, floats, you can add those. And by the way, when you add the floats, you can control uh, you can control them from within the uh, 3D cockpit. Uh, left basket or right basket, wire cutters, as you can see right here. Uh, the rotor shadows uh, Synflex, you can add a camera uh, for recording, a sling hook, which is right here. Uh, you can remove all ties and caps with one click, and you can also add a ground card. Another nice feature is uh, the fuel. So the way you fuel this aircraft uh, is by clicking on the fuel cap here, and now you can manipulate the amount of fuel inside the aircraft. Another thing that I really like about this uh, aircraft is that Dreamfall Creations have made it possible to map just about all the aircraft controls to either a keyboard or a joystick button. And if you go to the um, if you go to the joystick uh, assignment here, let me just click on any button here. So okay, this one says do nothing, edit, and if we scroll up here and go to, there you go. So this is the uh, Bell 407, and as you can see, look at all these commands can be mapped to, um, 
to either a joystick or a keyboard button circuit breakers. By the way, the circuit breakers are fully simulated in this aircraft. We'll take a look at this in, uh, in a short while. And so you've got all these things here that you can uh, basically map to uh, either keyboard or a joystick uh, button for increased uh, interactivity and realism. Moving away from the exterior to the interior, nothing falls short of the high quality that we've experienced in the exterior modeling of this aircraft. In fact, everything you see here is not just designed for looks, but serves a very good function. Moving around the 3D cockpit, you will immediately notice the high quality texture work that, uh, that has been put into this plane. As you can see, the material representation again looks absolutely stupendous. This looks like uh, leather. Uh, the carpet work right here and the panels uh, right over here, the scratches, uh, the sticks right there. Look at that. That looks very, very good. Looks extremely realistic in terms of the texture work. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the uh, back a little bit here. And as you can see, everything has been really modeled to look, uh, to look very, very realistic. Now, in some areas, uh, you know, you can, you can probably do a little better. Like, for example, here, the air conditioning uh, vents uh, perhaps can, uh, can receive a little uh, more care. But overall, the texture work looks simply outstanding. Look at that. Look at the carpet work uh, here, the cup holders. Uh, everything really looks uh, very, very good. It's uh, it's really been done with, with a lot of care and a lot of finesse. Another thing I like about this aircraft, by the way, look at the overhead panel here. Everything looks really, really good in terms of the texture work. Another thing I like uh, about this uh, about this aircraft is, uh, is that it comes with... Uh, some custom views already programmed. So if we go to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Look at that. That's a really nice view. So if you're creating like a uh, cinematic or something, then you're ready to uh, start shooting some, some really nice videos. Okay. So what we are going to be doing now is uh, we're going to fire up the aircraft. I did read the well, I didn't read the manual. Let me rephrase. I skimmed through the manual in order to be able to start this aircraft. And uh, we're going to take it for a short flight here around uh, Orlando International Airport. And hopefully we can expose some of the features and take a look at the flight dynamics, which is quite challenging, something I'm really not accustomed to. So guys, I'm definitely looking for your advice. Before we begin our test flight today, I'd like to say a few things about frame rates. Um, now, this aircraft compares to any other aircraft of the same uh, texture quality and complexity. And uh, I'm getting 36, 37 frames now. Uh, of course, my X-Plane settings are available in the description section of the video. And it compares to any other aircraft, really. Now, the Strange thing about the scenery, and by the way, this scenery is created by Nimbus Studios. This is a payware scenery. Um, when I change the time to night time, look at what happens. I get about 10 FPS increase uh, in frames. I'm not sure why that is, but it is nothing to do with the aircraft. It is actually the scenery. So I've tested several, uh, uh, several other aircraft, and I get exactly the same results. So... Let us go ahead and fire up the aircraft. And first thing first, let us uh, move. By the way, all these uh, circuit breakers are uh, operational. Uh, very, very cool. Okay, let's go to... All right, so first thing is battery. Battery is on. And there is a button here to silence, uh, you know, these really, it's really loud. So just click on this uh, silencer here and it will silence the, uh, you know, the alarms. All right, back to the overhead panel. The battery is on, uh, position light is on, anti-collision lights are on. We're gonna turn on the left and right fuel boosters. And now we're gonna head uh, down here and uh, fuel valve is on. And okay, so I need to put this all the way down. So this is the reverse of what I'm used to. 
Okay, and we need to put the throttle on idle. Okay, throttle on idle. And let's go ahead and fire it up. Oh, listen to that sound. Okay, and now we put the throttle on 25% increase. All right, and now we can come back here. Avionics on, generator is on, and we can turn on the flight instruments. Okay, and let's go back here. Everything appears to be normal. Okay, let's try to lift the aircraft off the ground. Now, I'm going to leave this uh, headset here because I want to show you how it moves while we're turning up in the air. And then we're going to go ahead and, and use it as it will significantly reduce the sounds inside the cockpit. So, let's put the throttle on max. All right, and everything now looks uh, okay. All right, so here's the tricky part. Let me move. You have to coordinate now. The you have to uh, use the rudder pedals to uh, keep the uh, aircraft straight. I'm going to push the nose a little bit forward, and now I'm going to increase collective. That wasn't very good, but here we go. I think we're off the ground. Let me tell you, it is so different flying a chopper than flying an aircraft. Oh, this is a lot of fun, guys. Very, very challenging. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong, but uh, here, as you can see, look at the headset. Look as I turn, what happens to the headset? Really, really cool. All right, let's go ahead and uh, put those on. And as you can see, it, it really reduces the uh, sound inside the cockpit. Beautiful. So much fun and uh, a lot of challenge, really. It's very, very challenging flying a helicopter. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the uh, instrument uh, lights right over here. And look at that. Let me switch to this side. Yeah, look at the, the overhead panel, looking pretty good. Frames are still pretty good. Now, let me show you just one thing. Um, the autopilot is located right over here, so if I click on SAS and altitude, that will fix our altitude. And we can also fix the heading, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say heading, right, and now pretty much the aircraft is going to fly itself. Beautiful. How about we play just a little bit? Uh, let me remove heading and uh, maybe we can just play around with the aircraft a little bit. Let's give it rudder. And as you see, the, the, the sound actually changes as, uh, as we make those moves. Now, I'm not sure if this is uh, the right way of doing things, um, but it definitely does feel different. Oh, that's just beautiful. Very nice indeed. Here's, by the way, the rudder movement. So I'm doing a uh, right rudder, left rudder. And by the way, if there, uh, if there is any one of you guys who's a real helicopter uh, pilot, uh, maybe you can comment on how realistic this is just from what you're seeing. Um, 
let me tell you, it's it's a lot of fun. I think I'm going to start flying helicopters more often after really uh, testing this uh, Bell 407, and perhaps uh, I can also do this in in uh, in DCS. Uh, DCS has got some really uh, some really very sophisticated, very complex um, helicopters, but this one I think is one that I really enjoy, and uh, I think it's. Dream, uh, Dreamfoil Creations have done a phenomenal job in, in creating this, uh, this aircraft for X-Plane 11. This brings us to the conclusion of our first impressions video. In my opinion, the Bell 407 created by Dreamfoil Creations is a significant aircraft for X-Plane 11, and I think the insignificant price of $35 is well worth it. If you're a helicopter uh, fan, if you like flying helicopters, if you like uh, flying challenges, I think this aircraft can offer a lot of challenge uh, for your flying skills. I am confident to recommend this aircraft anytime and I hope that you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye for now.